Hi everyone, welcome back to Painted. It is Saturday. I am back from my vacation, which was a little hard to come home from. I honestly admit that was not easy to come home to the cold after being in wonderful, sunny uh, Turks and Caicos this past week. But I'm back, I'm refreshed, I'm rested, and we're going right into being here with a brand new live. So today is our little hearts and flowers and a little something more uh, video. Um, give me, I'm organized, I have everything set up, but it's been a while since I've done a live because January was just nuts. So if I seem a little out of doing lives, it's because I haven't done a live in a while. So let's get right into it. Today's project, the first one we're working on, is this little plant stand, heart-shaped top, tall, little heart-shaped base. Um, this was gifted to me, it said, please do something with it. I have no idea what to do. So what we've done is we've painted the legs. This was raw wood. There were screw holes. If you look close, you can see them through the paint. There's these little uh, plug holes that had to be filled and it was raw, sanded down, painted, sanded, sealed up, everything's ready to go. So the first thing we're gonna do is obviously put colors on here. What we've got on here for colors, the legs are set coat black and the top, oh, I gotta reach. My arms just didn't get longer on vacation. This color is set coat metallic ruby. Gorgeous, gorgeous color. So once I got the base colors on, I had to figure out what I wanted to do. So what we're going to do today is we're going to play with our Artsyville metallic plaster. We're going to create a color and we're going to use our chrysanthemum rollers because what could be more Valentine's Day than hearts and flowers? So I'm going to adjust the camera so you can see what I'm mixing. And here we go. If I, again, as per usual, if I don't answer your questions and I don't see them, don't worry, I will check on the video feed and answer them after we're done. So here we go. Um, Artsyville metallic paste. It's a metallic plaster product. You can see, this is the color. It's a tint base, it's slightly translucent, so it takes colors really nicely. And I'm gonna kind of create a pink. It won't be identical to the color there, but that's all right. That was just my base color. Yes, I'm being smart and putting gloves on. I know everybody laughs at me because I never put my gloves on. So the first thing I have to do is get some plaster into a mixing cup. There we go. I usually mix up more than I need because then I'd rather have a little bit over than nowhere near enough. It's nothing worse than trying to color match in the middle of a project. It's a waste of time and it's certainly, it almost, I almost never get, you know, it's when you're color mixing, unless you have an absolute perfect formula for X number of ounces and X number of drops of every color, you don't get a color match easily. Hi, Barb, nice to see you. Barbara Williams, nice to see you. Eva, nice to see you too. Thanks everybody for popping in. Okay, so I'm going to tint this. And, and you can tint this. This will take any pro, uh, tint that works in any water-based paint. So I'm gonna use Faux FX Magenta, Faux FX uh, Red Faux Cream Colors. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of Guerrero Pigments Bordeaux. Um, because I need to color test a few things. I want to see, ooh, I just dribbled everywhere. Well, that gave me my color test. Yeah, I think that might be a little too muddy. And if you notice, I'm, I can color test. This is plastic on my table, so I can do a color smear and get a really clear color read. Um, and it'll tell me what I need to do. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to try to create a little bit of a pink color that's like the the uh, metallic ruby. First I'm sticking in some red and because I don't want it too purpley I'm going to just put a little bit of uh, the magenta in it and I'm going to stir it and see where it got to. Take it up 
there. It's actually pretty close to the color I made. I mean, pretty close to the color from Faux Effects. Jeez. I guess I've been mixing colors while long enough that I get close when I guess. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to mix really well because I don't want color smears of lights and darks because I was lazy in my mixing. Hi, Sylvia. Nice to see you. Um, yeah, I, I am really pretty close, folks. Wasn't even working it that hard. A little lighter. And maybe I'll put a little more red, a little more magenta in there, because it's a little lighter than I want. I don't want it to be a perfect max match. I want the contrast, because we're going to run a roller through it. So I just want to make sure I'm really in the right family here. Just drop of that bergen, uh, that Bordeaux color. And the reason I show you that I'm using pigments from different companies and stuff is so that you understand that pigmenting, whatever you have in your studio, you might be able to work with. You don't have to go out and buy a whole new set of colorants just to work with this product. It will work with colorants from Modern Masters, colorants from Golden, colorants from Faux Effects, obviously colorants from Guerrera Pigments. So you have options of what you wanna do. Now that's a pretty nice pink color. Now I'm gonna to have to stand up and shift things around because I can't just lay this down sideways. Your camera needs to be up and then I need to be standing up too. So give me a sec folks, we're gonna adjust cameras here. set this on something so you all can see it. And I don't think that's quite high enough. There we go. So I've set this on a chair, just I don't normally paint on a chair. I've set it on a chair so that you all can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna use one of our wonderful little mini Japanese trowels and I'm gonna cover the whole surface. This is very creamy and it's gonna spread it spreads like frosting. It's so easy to move around. Now, there's always gonna be a question about what, what do you do with an edge, especially a rounded edge like this, and I'm gonna show you how I handle it. The first thing I'm gonna do is handle the top of this. And I'm just buttering it. And I'm applying generously. This does not crack when it dries so I can afford to be generous with it so I can get a nice texture built up on here with the roller. Alrighty. Yeah, and I'm gonna go in with my finger and clean out the crevice because that's what you gotta do. You know, heart shapes are a little awkward sometimes because you have an unusual crease right up here at the top of it. Um, and I know people, when they get a hold of a trowel, they get anxious about it. Like, are they troweling it right? Are they doing this right? It takes practice to use a trowel. So just keep troweling until you get it right the way you want it. And it's really easy to get very thin around the edges, so you kind of have to pay attention, because if you look at mine, I'm very thin right there, and that's not going to help me at all. Uh, let's see how I am on my top here. Yep, I'm a little thin right over there. don't worry about these edges and I don't even worry about the fact that I just got pink on the, the leg because I can just clean that off later to make sure I've got a nice even coat and this is a small surface so sometimes it's harder to get an even coat on a small surface than it is on a big one 
because you have these little edges and your trowel just wants to kind of move right over instead of lay it all out levelly. And if you watch my video that I just posted a quick fast motion video, time lapse. Um, I get my troweling arm back on for my vacation. Wow. Go on vacation for a couple of days and you forget how to trowel. I want to get that edge right there. Um, my time lapse video. You'll see I, I trowel furniture surfaces a lot because I like that textured surface. Okay, so I've got my surface complete. I am taking my roller. And as a habit, I tend to start in the middle and then go on either side. Why? Because that guarantees I get an even pattern down the center and it gives me a nice guideline. And that in itself is so pretty. Look how cute that looks. I love this. Now, of course, I have these messy edges to deal with. So you can wipe them down. I could have taped them off. But one of my favorite things to do, because I like a textured edge, take a chip brush, dip in a little plaster, and I'm going to clean it. And I'm doing this. Now I had enough goop on the edge of this that I didn't have to work too hard to get this area finished. And you'll see I'm pulling up along the edges, which is what I want to do. I don't want my bristles to go into the pattern because I might screw it up that way. So if I brush up, then when it dries, I can sand this edge down to make it nice and clean. And then I'm going back occasionally because I got to fill in spots that I didn't get in one direction. Boy band, <laughs> one direction. Sorry, I had a had a flip back to a boy band name. And I love stuff. I love this kind of slightly coarse texture because it's just interesting to me. Try not to drop it off the edge of the chair while I'm doing this. there and if when this dries I find that it looks patchy I'll go back and do it again which is another reason to make a little more of the product a little more mixture so you can go back and build up if you need to and I can see this is probably going to need it now I'm not going to try to do this with the roller on this bottom here because the roller is going to get in here and jam here and jam there and jam there. I will never get a good pattern release Hi, Susan. No, you're not late. Hi, Annette. Hi, Tamara. Nice to see you. So I've just troweled this on smooth, mixed my colors, troweled it on smooth, run a roller through it, and then rough finished the edges. And I know I'm getting handprints on spots. Not a big deal. It'll sand off because the legs were going to foil. All right, let me set this aside, let it dry. And let's see what else I've got sitting here. I've got other projects, but of course, Everything's going and drying and trying to do stuff at different times. All right, so let me move these items out of the way so I can get at the next thing we're doing. Pulling you closer to me. All right, even my roller. And even if this dries, you can see my roller went back into my bin wet. Really nice. <laughs> Susan, you thought there must be foil in there somewhere. Of course. How could there not be foil in something I'm working on? And we're having lots of foil fun right now. Sorry, I've got to shift something so that I can turn a paper over and not have um, any red bleed onto something that's not red. So forgive the shaking, I'm putting it back under the um, tripod. Let's see, how dry is that? That's not very dry. I'm gonna hand, so the gloves, the gloves come off. 
Alrighty, so I'm working on about half a dozen different things here right now. But as you can see, the other thing that you might have seen floating around on Facebook, let me just put the camera up so you can see me, um, is the bar that I did that had been the pink leopard and then I covered in gray. And then I sat and stared at it for several weeks trying to figure out what to do with it. Finally came up with a concept that I'm happy with. I have uh, a lot of fun ideas. So I think I'm still waiting for some foil adhesive over here to dry. So I think I'll move over to the next um, project. Take the camera over there so you can see what I'm working on. And hang on just a second. Let me get the button here to release the tripod. There it is. Sometimes you have to do things the hard way. Alrighty, so let me put the camera over here. Yep, we're working on multiple tripods today. So this is the bar. Um, I finally got a concept started that I was happy with. And what I've done on this is I've taken um, Venetian Gem, Fofax Venetian Gem, which of course isn't anywhere right within my reach to show you. But it is our, a Volfex synthetic, 100% acrylic plaster product. And I mix moonstone gray and black to get this color that is almost identical to the charcoal set coat from Volfex, which is the other color that you see on the front here. What I did is I rolled, I troweled it on 100% coverage. And then, ooh, little pink stuff from my finger on there. Um, then I ran a leopard print, uh, a leopard roller through it. The next thing I'm going to do, you know, I'm looking at this going, okay, I got a gray plaster top with leopard. So what the heck do I do with it? We're going to use Fofex Galaxy Stone. It is not a plaster product, although it can get thick looking like this after a while in the container. It just means that some of the moisture is dried. If you want, you can add more uh, water. And when I say add water, I'm telling you, take it out of the container and put water in a separate container to do that. Do not pour water from the tap right into there. And my apron just completely untied itself. Wow. Sorry about that, everybody. My apron's ready to go home before I am. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do is take some of this Galaxy Stone. The base is transluc slightly translucent, and this stuff dries glittery but you can add more glitter to it, which is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take some out in here. My mixing stick. Well, I think I may add a little water to it. Um, as I was saying before, you don't add water to the can. Why? Because tap water will contaminate it and that's part of what causes mold and stuff to grow on your paint, your paint to go funky, get that weird smell out of it. All right, I've had a little bit of water just to loosen that up because this can I've had for quite a while. Yeah, the Fall Effects makes the glitter that goes with it. It comes in clear and black, but we're gonna add more than just the clear glitter. We're also gonna add some of the silver glitter that we carry. Because why glitter a little when you can glitter a lot? <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm laughing at my own bad jokes. If I don't laugh at them, I doubt anybody else will. <laughs> I may add a little more silver to that because I'm liking the way the sparkling's looking. And the rest of this is going to have a lot of silver in this. We're going to put a little more silver. Now, adding silver, I mean, adding glitter um, kind of thickens up a product. It doesn't act, you know, it doesn't blend in with this, but you're just adding bulk to it. So I'm gonna need to add a drop or two more of water. And I always keep some kind of like sport thing around to put a little water in things if I need it. Um, it kind of keeps, having a bottle like that makes the control easier. Okay. And I am so far away from the camera right now so that if anybody's asking questions, I'm sorry I can't answer them because I can't see that far to read them. Let me turn the camera just a little bit so you're looking less at the, sh 
the shelves and more at the total top. Oh, look, I'm peeking in. <laughs> Susan, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Michelle, nice to see you here. Okay, now the application for this could not be simpler. It rolls on and brushes on just like paint, any other paint. Just looks a little thicker. I'm gonna take my roller, push it in here. Uh, normally, and if I had thought about it ahead of time, but again, I'm still just coming off my vacation, I would have dampened my roller a little bit because that helps um, keep moisture in the product, but it also keeps product for moisture from soaking up all the way into the roller and leaving the product. All right. I'm blowing all the extra glitter off. Of course, there isn't anything in the studio that doesn't have glitter on it anymore. Camilla, who you all remember, was my assistant for a long time, just texted me the other day, said she went out with friends last night and there was glitter on her face from my studio. She must have put on something she wore here. All right, so we're just gonna roll this on. And as you can see, I'm not rolling in any pattern. Why? Because I don't want, when this dries, for the roller marks to be clear and obvious. Now, as this is going on right now, oops, I put little chunks of stuff in here, probably from my pan. Um, I don't want the roller marks to be obvious. This will dry darker and it will dry clearer and the leopard texture will show more. And if I think I need to make it show even more, I will glaze over this with a little bit of glaze to create a little more contrast in the pattern. Cause I know you all can't, I can't see it on there. I know you can't see that there's actually a leopard pattern in here and I'm just picking up stuff. This is what happens with old cans and it doesn't freak me out. I, th I got a little chunk of something dried in there. I go in. Look, I took it off. Oh my gosh, that was hard. I know a lot of people when they first start painting furniture think every single brush stroke, every single roll has to be absolutely flawless and that's not how it goes. Hand painting anything has faults just like anything else. It has imperfections and flaws that are part of the intrinsic beauty of hand painted. Now the cool thing about Galaxy Stone, and this is a fairly new faux effects product, is it dries super, super hard. So on its own, this will, without a top coat, be almost indestructible. And that's one of the nice things about this. All right. So I've gotten that done. Now the other place we're gonna go is down here on the front, and I'm gonna drop the camera down so you can see where I'm at. And I just dropped stuff all over the floor. Hang on a second, folks. Try not to drip my, dip my skirts into a mess. And let me grab a brush. All right, I'm gonna whoop, dump my head under. Drop the camera down a little bit so you can see. Sorry for the bobbling. Don't anybody get seasick, I hope. Okay. Let's see how you're focused. Yep, you can see it there. And I'm not going to do this whole thing. I'm just going to show you the technique that I'm going for. And I'm going to have to zip across here because my paint's over there and I'm over here. Okay, now I'm coming back. Uh, I am a camera genius. I just put myself in the most awkward positions. So I'm sitting on a little stool down closer to the floor. And I'm gonna take a brush, and as you can see, I've taped off the, somebody called it an amoeba shape pattern. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go around the edges. Now it doesn't look like anything, I know, but what I wanna do is cut that edge around because I'm gonna have to come at it with a roller. So I want to get in tight before um, I start trying to clean. It's like cutting in a room. I want my edges cut in so that when I hit it with the roller, I can get in nice and close. 
and then but not have to come back over it with a brush. All right, you're gonna get my head, the top of my head, in a couple of these shots because, well, cuz. <laughs> all right, so I'm taking the roller and I'm doing the same thing. That's why we're all taped off around the edges so I can do the random rolling pattern all over the surface. And you see, I still have some chunks occasionally that'll show up. It's not a big deal. Happens with old product. I wipe it off, I go back, and I put on more. And again, like I said, if I see this when it's dry and it doesn't look like I've gotten where I want to get to with it, I'll just put on another coat. Because really what I want is sort of a this kind of granity, sparkly texture, but it's low key. Got a nice big chunk sitting right there that got to come out. There we go. I know people can make things look a lot harder than they are. Um, some people are really good at making things look easier than they are, and a lot of people are really good at finding a way to make it harder than it needs to be. I think I kind of sit in the middle of that. I, I try to find the most practical way to do something, things that make the most sense, things that accomplish what I want to have happen in the, the minimum of steps. Again, sorry for the back of my head. I'm going into the paint pan down here. And one of the ways to do that is to think out your project before you do it. Um, I will have a lot of projects sometimes that I just sort of wing from step to step. But then there are the projects that I really have to pay attention to how I've done it. Because otherwise I won't get a good result. And this was one of those projects that I really needed to think out because... I, 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 I was the one who painted the pink leopard on here. So the next one is for me to go, well, I got it. Now that I did that, what's, how do I handle what I want to do next on it? And very few times do I start a project, a piece of furniture, without a clear um, idea of what I want the end to look like. Occasionally, like I said, I want winged it. Usually, sometimes the stuff I wing actually even comes out better. But most of the time, if I wing it, I've taken so many steps that it becomes not cost efficient. All right, so you can see what I've done here. I've put the sparkle, uh, sparkle coat, galaxy stone, all over the front and all over the top. And now we're going to go back over to the table where we're going to work on some more things. You can see there's a drawer up there. Part of what I've been waiting for was for the foil adhesive to dry. And let's go this way. And I know the camera swings can make people nauseous, but we're working in two spots. Am I doing leopard? Yes, I'm doing leopards. I did this in pink leopard, but we're gonna do actually more of a cheetah on this. And then, um, you just did this with Vegetian Gem on a dresser. That's exactly what I was doing. <laughs> it's not a dresser, it's actually a bar. Um, let me push the camera back up, adjust the angle so you can see what I'm doing. Again, this is a lot of camera movement today. I know that's challenging. It can be a... And the camera falls once in a while. All righty, let's try this one again. Sorry for my hand. It's in front of the lens while I put the, uh, I try so hard not to do that, but I'm left-handed, so my hand's almost always in front of the lens. There we go. All right, so you can see this is the inside drawer. It's This was a bar, and so old 1950s bars like this would have a place for the ice bucket, shot glasses, rocks glasses, highballs. So I've now taken this. I have painted it again charcoal gray, um, I had paint, it had been painted black by me before. It was old, it was beaten up. 
it needed a new little bit of love, so we're changing this up completely. And where did I set the foil that we're using? Right here. We're gonna use Koi Cheetah on this one. And we're gonna do the inside of the drawer. Let me, of course, the other thing I forgot was the scissors. Fortunately, everything's within a few steps. So I'm gonna take my Koi Cheetah foil. Now I have applied foil adhesive over this entire surface. And I think what we're gonna do, because I'll probably have to move this around in some awkward ways, um, we're gonna start on the drawer front right here. I think you can see that. I have an angle on it so that you can see it and I can get at it. All right, cut the piece. And if I don't get the release I like the first time around, I can always apply another layer of adhesive and foil it again. So I'm gonna set this up on top on here. Right down as smooth as I can get it. And there we go. So you can see it's on the drawer and my scrubbers all the way over there. So once I've gotten that on my first, you know, initial smooth down, and you can, this, this, this foil releases so well, and the adhesive is so good, if I didn't want to use a scrub brush, I can often get away with kind of burnishing it with a, a towel and get a great release that way. And I kind of go back and forth with my hands because I want to make sure if I had any bubbles in here that I smooth them down because that also helps uh, release other foils on here because what happens is you bubble and then it, the foil film releases back up and it creates a way for um, you to move air under here that helps release the foil. I don't think I'm, I can't really explain it, but if you have a bubble and it comes up, if I push it down and release the foil, then I have this loose bit here. And as I push, it helps loosen up the film backing in other areas and the foil releases really nicely. This foil releases really nicely no matter what, but I always like a little extra something. See that sound that you hear? That is some of the air bubbles popping and coming down and then the foil film releasing back. I don't think I'm describing what I'm talking about very well, so if you don't understand what I mean, um, we'll try, I'll try to show it again in another video. I'll read your comments. All right, let's see if I got enough down here. And I try to be thorough. Foiling isn't hard. I just want to be really thorough because this is a drawer front. And I really try like to see it release as well as possible and not have to do another one. And this is the part that people will see first when they open the cabinet door. So I want it to look really good. Let's see, how does it release? Oh, that released really well. Nicely, nicely. I just need to take one spot over here that didn't release as well. Back in there. So here we go. We have that nice cheetah release on there. Look how pretty that is, that koi cheetah. Uh, you can't see it, I can. There's little bubble spots, so I'll probably go back over this once we're done and make sure I've clean, cleaned this all up so that there's no unevenness there. And if, like I said, if I don't like how it is, I will absolutely do another layer. I don't often need to do another layer. 
usually if I need to do a la another layer, it's my fault. Nothing to do with the product. It means I did a sloppy application. All right, so we're gonna take this and I'm gonna foil the back of the drawer. So I'm gonna foil the side edges. And then we're gonna do this on top because now I can, now I have a split place that I can grab onto without leaving fingerprints. So we're gonna take some of this. here. Where'd my scissor go? Oh yeah, this is going to be so cool. And I push my brush over here. Now I have a gap here and I see it. That's not going to be a problem because this pattern really blends nicely. I and mean, look how great that is. That is so sharp looking. Take another piece of foil. right over the top edge there and I know I'm gonna have spots that have to be worked out that's not a big deal it's all part of this Yes, look at how sharp that looks. Come in here. Fingers are great tools. When nothing else reaches, your fingers always seem to. I said this foil releases so nicely I don't always need a scrub brush I just need to get into where I need to put the foil let's see I have a little strip here we go This is just so cool looking and very appropriate looking for the, the, the period of this piece, which is mid-century. It was perfect in the pink cheetah for the client who wanted it pink. Now it's gonna be awesome in silver for the customer who wants it in silver. A little more back there and I use all these extra pieces. These pieces don't go to waste. Um, when there's bits left, they go into a bin. I use up the unused parts on smaller projects or smaller pieces that need to be have their have certain spots filled in. And then when I if I if I don't need anything else out of it, I put it in our packing materials. If you've ordered from us, sometimes you'll see you get partially used pieces of foil in it. So I try to leave a little bit on these so you all have a chance to try some of the cool colors and patterns that we have in our foils. Jeez, this is just releasing so nicely. I, mean, I, can't, I could not be more pleased. Oh, 
Oh, wow. I mean, that's really good. Just so thrilled. Really, really pleased. I mean, I'm gonna need a smaller brush to get into that spot or just use my finger more. Yep, that did it. Just need a little more rubbing with my fingers. That edge right there. And then this little spot right over here. And I, one of the things I like about some of these foils, I there are foils I have that have very distinct patterns. And so the patterns will have a very distinct direction. When you're doing a tone on tone, oh my gosh, the patching is so much easier, the repairing, you know, filling in, filling in funny spots. There is a little thin spot right there. And it's annoying me. There we go. Oh, that's better. And then I gotta get the sides. And I mean, seriously, how fast is this? This is high impact and fast. Side. Ooh, I missed the bottom because I was hitting the table. And then here we go with the other one, the other side. And we will be done for today. And yes, I will be back tomorrow working on this project and the hearts, so we can the heart-shaped plant stand, so we can do hearts and flowers, and 50s mid-century modern leopard, all on the same live. How cool is that? Oh yeah. I mean, folks, look at this. This is the coolest thing ever. I am so excited by this. Okay. Put this up. Sorry, it's not always easy to get everything working. So I'm gonna go home, moisturize my tan so I don't lose it, <laughs> and uh, plan for my next steps for tomorrow. I think this look came out fantastic. I appreciate you all being here with me for it. I'm in love with my Koi Cheetah bar drawer, and I'm in love with my metallic plaster heart-shaped plant stand. Gosh, I have to pause once in a while to make sure I don't twist the words up and say something strange. All right, everybody, have a great Saturday night, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.